so i'll provide you the introduction now so here you have the tree menu first in the software you have tables works group and report and here this is the model window where we'll create the model this is the message window you have the command message and analysis message and the right side you have tree menu 2 which is a replica of tree menu 1 you can right click and get this tree menu 2 if you do not have and here you have the main tabs so we'll be using these tabs in the session starting from structure node and element properties boundaries load analysis results till the tools so we'll be using that and here you have command message and analysis message and at the bottom you have the units okay so let me open the pdf now so we'll be following this hands-on training session integral steel composite bridge uh, tutorial step by step so this contains a uh, single span integral steel composite bridge uh, modeling analysis and design steps span length is 40 meters of the bridge carriageway width is 9 meters the remaining width is 3 meters we'll be using SI system throughout the session first we'll start with the geometry Next, we'll uh, create the properties, boundaries, apply the loads and uh, construction stage definitions. We'll set up the construction stages. Next, we'll apply soil spring boundary conditions. Uh, this is to model the surrounding soil uh, bit around the piles. Soil structure inter uh, interaction will introduce and then we'll perform moving load analysis as per your code. We'll divide this training into two parts. First is pre-processing, next is post-processing. In pre-processing, we'll start with the geometry till the moving loads. So if you see this page number four, you have preferences, design, and the load code. So one, two, three are your mouse clicks. You have to read this instruction first. So all of you, I repeat, you have to read these instructions. So here first is tools, preference, design. So you have to go to the program, click tools, preference, then design, then this EN042 and three. So these are your clicks. That's how we have to follow entirely through this training. That's how this PDF is laid out. So we'll start with this step, which is page number four. First, let's set the preferences. I'll go to tools, click on preference, design load here in composite. I'll select EN04 and class A, click OK. Here, click composite, click OK. Now let's go to page number five. Let's start creating the geometry first. We'll use the manual method, which is creating node and elements. We'll use all these operations, node and element operations, rather than going for the wizard. So we have a steel composite bridge wizard. So this will automatically generate the model for you. The program will generate the geometry and loading and uh, construction stages moving load everything by wizard but we'll use the manual method we'll start from the scratch building the model first step is to create nodes i'll click on create node at the origin click apply so this is my first node now next what i'll do is i'll uh, try to extrude the girder from this node so i'll click on extrude here you have node and line element so I'll extrude a line element from this node. So line to planar, planar to solid you have. So I'll select node to line. So from this origin node, I'll extrude a girder line. So material section property right now I did not define. I'll define it in later steps. Here uh, I'll and save your file.
So let me see if my file all of you if it did not prompt it will prompt for for every five minutes click on save and save your file. Okay, now here in extrude dx direction dx is x direction 5 meter length 8 times. So before clicking apply you have to select the node. So you have the selection options here. You can use the selection options to select the node and elements. Let me use the single select. So you can see here the node is selected. You have the node numbers and element numbers here. Keep your cursor uh, on the icon. You'll see the information displayed. And then click apply. Click this isometric views. Isometric top front. So this is my one girder. Now I'll go to the top view. I'll click on translate elements and I want to copy this transversely in the y direction with 3.5 meter distance three times turn on the intersect node and element click apply and before that you have to select so click on select all click apply so these are my four girders. So this completes page number five step. Any questions here? See all the attendees if you are able to follow type in yes. Whether I'm going fast or slow you can also type comment on it. Is it okay? The speed is okay. See the extrude length. The extrude length is 3.5. Uh, this is the translate option. The extrude length is 5 meters. So you can undo if you have made any mistakes. You can undo this particular step. And also the extrude step. So here what I did is this extrude option. Each length is 5 meters 8 times and after that I have translated. Do not click close from this option. It will close the tree menu. So click close and again if you, you have to bring back the tree menu if you have closed it. Let's go to page number 6 now. Let's click on create elements. Now I'll click on this node connectivity box. It turns to green that means it is active the graphical window click here first node and then second node. Let's translate now. We'll be using translate option to copy these elements. So translate option. Here in equal distance, let's give it five, seven times. Intersect node and element. Why we do this? This is because we already have node and elements in that position. So when we are copying these elements this side, so we do not want duplicate nodes or the elements. So we want them to intersect and form only one node and one element. So which ones we need to copy these elements I'll select I'll click apply. So you can go to selection options and uh, select these elements. Click escape to come out of the selection. So this is page number six steps. Now let's extrude. 
close this click on extrude click on isometric view you can see we want it to create the abutment plate elements so i'll change this to line to planar so i'll use this three line elements and then draw and extrude planar elements and uh, Here I'll give the distance as minus one for five times, so five meter length. I have to select the elements. Click apply. Now let's go to the front view. Select this bottom notes. You see the isometric view. You can see these four nodes are selected. We wanted to extrude line elements from the nodes, which are nothing but piles. What is the length? It's 15 meter length. So one one meter, 15 times. Click apply. Okay, let's use the mirror option. Page number eight, click on mirror option. Here the distance is 20 meters because my length of the bridge is 40. So I wanna keep the mirror at 40, uh, at 20. I wanna keep the mirror at 20 and then try to mirror this substructure to the other side. Click on node and intersect option. Let me go to front view. Select this substructure. And I'll click apply. Don't forget to turn on this intersect and node element. So this completes the geometry. Now we'll add the material properties. So any questions still here or if you have missed anything raise your hand or type a question uh, there is one question can you please repeat what version of Midas you have you want to check you have to click this button click on about Midas civil click this drop down click on Midas civil you can check the version which you have. If you have an older version also, that's fine. I'm using 2020 v2.1, which is the latest version. All right, let's go ahead. Let's start with the material properties. Click close, go to properties, material properties, click add. Here, let's add some material properties. First steel, S355, click apply. Page number 10, we'll have a concrete material property for this concrete deck let's take that grade as c3545 you see the properties which are automatically taken by the program from the code click apply now i want to add a dummy material property as we are making a grill age so i'll turn this back to none and then change this to change the density to zero and type in the name as dummy Beam. 
and click OK. So here we have to select the code first and then the grade and then change this back to none. So then uh, the program will retain the rest of the values. Then we'll only change the density to zero. Keep all the other parameters same for the dummy beam. We do not want the sulfate of the dummy beam. let's go ahead i hope everyone has followed till page number 11 let's add the section properties click close so here click on section properties click add and uh, here we have composite tab select steel i type 1 so here you have many sections. If you are doing a PSC section, you can select PSC sections. Composite, you have steel eye, steel box, tub, PSC composite, steel composite sections. Type one, I'll select. Give the name as mid span. BC is 3.5, next. HW is 1 meter, 0 0.5, thickness 0 0.05, 0 0.02, 0 0.5, 0 0.05. Enter these values. This is given in page number 12 of the PDF. Click on select material for DB. C3545, steel material is 355. So you need to select this uh, material property again, though we defined the material property here before. This material property is for the section property calculation. You need this modular ratio, density ratio, all these ratios to calculate the section properties of a composite material, composite section. So we need to re redefine them. Change the offset to center top. Click OK. Click on show calculation result. You can see the value before and value after section properties. Click apply. So this is mid section. Let's go to near abutment section. Uh, we have two sections and uh, will have a tapering as well. So I'll only change the HW to 1.4. Rest all I'll keep it same. Click apply. So this is near abutment section. Let's go to page number 14 now. Any questions here? There is one question from Vijay Kumar. How can we verify the rotational stiffness at the abutment and girder joint? Theoretically, all the girders are embedded into the abutment. How can we validate whether actual stiffness being considered in the model? See, the program will consider the stiffness based on the sections that you have given. 
at the joint if you are trying to uh, uh, create a frame uh, between an abutment and the girder so their respective stiffnesses are there so the program uh, the program will consider the relative stiffness and distribute the forces based on that so we are not modeling any joint here it's a full rigid connection between the members so the relative stiffness plays a major role in the load distribution Any other questions? Type in, in the questions box. Is it okay? Everyone has did these steps. Please confirm by pressing yes. All of the attendees. Okay, let's go to the DB user. Select channel section. Click on user. Enter these values. These are for the cross bracings. Give the name as cross bracing. Change the offset to center top. Click OK. So this completes page number 14. Let's go to page number 15 where we'll add the substructure section, which is pile section. I'll click on add. I'll select solid circular solid round user file diameter let's give it as one meter give the name as pile we will not give the offset click apply now let's select solid rectangle give the name as dummy transverse h as 0.25 and uh, b as 1.6 then click apply now let's create the tapered section so we'll be having the tapered section from the abutment to the mid part mid section click on tapered Select composite steel I type one. Give the name as left to right. So left you have the abutment section. So select at I end near abutment and at the J at the end I have mid. And give the BC as 3.5.25 is the thickness of the slab. And uh, we need to select the material for DB again. We know it is C3545 and this is S355. Click OK. Change the offset to center top. Click up there. Now we'll reverse it give the name as right to left at i end we'll select the mid at j end we'll select the near abutment and click apply click cancel to come out of it so this completes the sections which we need here
for this model let's go to thickness click add so we are here doing the steps of page number 19 let's add 1.2 as a wall thickness for the abutments click ok close so if you see the works tree it has displayed this material properties and sections some are in black and some are in blue the black ones are the ones which are assigned to the node end elements and uh, coming to the sections here you have the mid span which is assigned to the elements all the elements but this is not true we have to change them so the blue indicates that they are not used so we'll change this first is the cross bracings i'll go to the top view turn off the hidden option you have this hidden option here so the sections assigned to the elements would be displayed turn off that you'll see the line view of the model now let's select the cross bracings so here you have selection option select this cross bracings drag and drop the cross bracing so if you double click you can cross check rest all are made cross bracing click escape to come out of the selection go to the front view and our left view and select the piles go to left view and select the piles drag and drop the pile so you have pile cross bracing mid span section so here we'll uh, change the material property if you see everything but i'm substructure is concrete so we'll select the entire substructure and then drag and drop this material property so you can double check these are made up of steel these are concrete this is mid section this is cross bracings then you have pile and the thickness is assigned to the abutments any questions here Okay, so there is a question adding to above query. There are few options available when we create plate elements such as with DOF and without DOF. Both will give different results. So this is drilling degree of freedom. So for plate element at a node, you have only five degrees of freedom where the moment about Z, the rotation about Z is ignored. That's a basic behavior of the plate element, but we have this drilling option. So that is a drilling degree of freedom, which is the rotation about Z axis. If you turn that on, the program will calculate that drilling degree of freedom stiffness in the stiffness calculations. And yes, there would be a change in results. You can refer our analysis help manual. So there's a detailed uh, things that are listed out here for this option. okay so there is a request can you please go a little bit slower on this okay so i think i'll let me go back 
if you go to the left and uh, if you see the you don't you shouldn't assign this near abutment section so you have to assign the material property to the substructure so go select the substructure drag and drop this Instead of uh, uh, there's a question again. Is there a way to select the abutment faster? You can double click on the plate It selects the abutments and Press your control button and then you can select multiple uh, Options So you have beam and elements here plate elements and materials you have this so you can select many grow by pressing control and double clicking on them so those sections would be selected or you can use the selection options and select it singly So everyone, uh, did you all follow? Type in yes if you have followed and completed all the steps still here. All the attendees are request you to type in yes because if I unmute the mic, then there would be a lot of sound coming from a lot of attendees. So try to communicate with me so I'll also know whether you are doing the steps or not. Okay. Just a minute. Hi, yeah, Ms. Uh, Martin. Hi. Um. Yeah. So basically, I select all the panel. That you are seeing for the abutment but then uh, when I drag and drop they wouldn't be assigned to the um, abutment so I don't know why it's weird uh, that I don't know you're, the back. so you are selecting the abutments and dragging and drag and drop what you're doing material drag drop or section drag drop the section one first the section one you have to give it only for the player uh, beam elements of which are the piles so you'll only select the piles and then drag and drop the pile because abutments okay. are plate elements so they would be assigned with the thickness ah, okay okay so okay i see so for the for this panel above the piles i have to assign only the material basically that's why i was only the material yes ah, okay. because the property is thickness okay I see. Thank you. That's why I wasn't working then. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Let's go to page number 21. Uh, all of you see the screen uh, when I'm doing I'll give you some time to do this step. This is a little bit tricky I'll click on create elements here First what I'm uh, doing is I'm trying to create two elements in between this space So those would be my uh, dummy beams so I'll select and then beam and truss General beam and tapered here I'll give the material as cross beam or dummy beam and then select the section as dummy transverse and now I'll I can click and create the elements here if you notice there is a snap between an element first node second 
mid of that element and j end i end mid and j end of the element so if you want to change the snap positions in an element you can change from here so this is snapping in two parts so i want to snap in three parts so let's see three so you can see here one two and three so these are three parts so let me create the first dummy transfers this is my first dummy transfers now this has to be snapped in two so i'll change back to two click on the nodal connectivity click here and click on this so this creates two dummy transfers in between this space so if you do this step If you have made any mistakes, you can undo it and redo the step. Yeah, let's go ahead to the next step. Let me translate this elements. So I'll select these elements, click on translate option, give the distance as five meters, seven times. Click on node and element intersect. This is must click apply. Okay, let's go to the next step. Let's go to front view. Close this. Now here if you see uh, we have mid span. So entire all the girders are assigned with mid span, but we have a tapering. So we have to do that. So let's activate the girders. First, double click and right click, activate. Or you can use this options, activate and activate options. Once these are activated, you can see every uh, element is assigned with mid span section, but uh, we have to correct this. Let's go to the front view, go to single select, select the five elements from here, from the left side, one, two, three, four, and five. Drag and drop left and right. Similarly, let's select five elements and right to left. Turn on the hidden option. See uh, the I end and J end, we have given the sections. So that's why for every element, I and J, I and J, we have the same section so this we need to correct because we did not define the intermediate sections so this can be uh, quickly uh, done through our automatic command which is tapered group so this will make a smooth tapering from left to right end so you give one section at one particular distance the other section at other distance intermediate sections would be automatically calculated uh, 
the linear tapering can be formed. So we go to the properties, click on tapered group, give the name as tapered one, and uh, let's select the elements. Go to works in the tree menu too. I will click on left and right. Here I wanted the linear tapering. Click add. See the smooth tapering. Similarly, let's give it tapered two. In the element list, double click, the automatically the list would be updated. Click add. Yes. Do this step. Okay. Let's go ahead now. Let's go to page number 23. Let's activate all. Go to the top view or asymmetric view. Now here we'll start with the load definition. First, we need to give the static load names. Go to load, click on static load. Here, and give the name as self weight. Select the type as dead load, click add. This type is important because in auto load combination generation, the program will determine the factor based on the type of the load. Next, let's give the wet concrete. Add. Let's add parapet load. Add. And earth pressure. Change the type to earth pressure. Add. Close. You can see these are the names of the static loads. Now we have to create this groups structure group, boundary group, and load group and tenant group. So we have an intention of doing construction stage analysis. So that's why we need to create the structure group, boundary, and load groups. So we'll activate some of the structure groups, some of the boundaries, and some of the loads load groups in one stage and formulate that stage. So like that we'll uh, for formulate many stages based on our real construction process. So let's add the naming of the group first and then we'll assign the elements to the structure group. First is right click and click on new dot dot and uh, type in abutment and files add. Next, girders, main girders. Add. Next, cross bracing. Add it. Transfers elements. You can give shortcuts. I'm just typing the name which is given in the tutorial. Cross beams. Add. Close. Similarly, right click and click new. So new will only create one group. New dot dot will create many groups. Uh, you have an option to create many at once. Suppose load group new dot dot. Let's add some 
blue troops like sulfate, wet concrete, and then paraffin at earth pressure. Yes. So let me create this structure boundary and load groups. Simple name naming of the groups that we need to define. So any questions here? Let's proceed. Now we'll assign the groups to the respective elements. I'll see the line model. Now the first is abutment and piles. So all the abutment and piles should be grouped under this structure group. So let's select and drag and drop. Go to the left to you, select the abutment and piles, drag and drop. So if you double click, you have the abutment and piles. Next, you have main girders. So main girders, you can, you can select the main girders by clicking on the mid span and uh, these three sections, double click. Mid span. So if you click, select these three sections by using your control tab and double clicking on it, we'll select the main girders, drag and drop. So those are my main girders. Next is cross bracing. So I'll double click, drag and drop. Next, transverse elements, dummy transfers, drag and drop. Now we can double click on the previously created. Uh, previously selected groups like cross bracing and transverse elements double click you can see all the cross beams are selected drag and drop so these are my abutment and piles main girders cross bracing transverse elements and then the cross beams yeah I'll wait for a minute. I think uh, some people are lagging in some steps. Yeah, take a minute. And if you have done any mistakes, undo it and redo the steps.
I think. Let's go ahead now. Let's go to page number 25 now. Do anyone have any uh, issues or any questions? Type in, in the questions box. Okay, let's start the soil structure interaction definition. So here, there is one question. When I create tapered section group, the elements are not visualized anymore. For me, it is visualized. In the tapered group, you have to select the name and the list and click add. So, so they disappear at the moment I click add. I did not understand it. Just a moment, let me unmute you. Yeah, hi, uh, Marcin Socha. Can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Hello. Marcin? Hi. Yeah, hello. So when I actually click add, uh, the visualization disappears. So the elements actually uh, are not visible anymore. Okay, so you cannot see the uh, sections here in this fashion. Exactly. So they're visible before, uh, as uh, uh, tap each each section's been tapered. But when can I you, add it to the group, it? can you redo the steps? Try to delete them. So you okay. can delete them up. Try to delete okay. them up. Okay. Thank you. I'll have and a try. Yeah, select the elements manually, this five elements. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Uh, are you all able to follow all the attendees type in? Yes, if you have done the steps till the one that I've shown till page number 24. All of the attendees type in yes, who have done till page number 24. Okay. So other people who have questions, type in your questions or uh, raise your hand, I'll unmute and uh, maybe we can discuss. All right, let's proceed now. Let's go to page number 25 and uh, let's create the boundaries integral bridge. 
click on file spring let me give the ground level as minus 5 give the pile diameter 1 subgrade modulus let's give 80000 30 tens now we have to select the piles so go go to the left view and select the pile and click apply so you can see all the springs that are created right click and display and display now similarly uh, i think yeah next we'll add the uh, loads starting from the earth pressure click on pressure loads select the load case name as earth pressure and the group as earth pressure and uh, not the pressure loads click on hydrostatic pressure and select the load case name as earth pressure select the hydrostatic pressure we want a triangular distribution of the earth pressure so element here let's give the global x direction the loading application so x direction for this plate reference level at zero from reference level is this level which is origin so that is zero constant in intensity is p naught that is two and uh, next you have 10 kilonewton per meter cube this is the gradient intensity now let's select uh, just, wait, not, just select the plate elements uh, left side abutment so how do you do that go to the front view or go to the plates activate and now select this plate elements and click apply so right click and display see this elements double click on the plate activate only those elements would be displayed double click activate select these elements and click apply now let's change the direction to local z now let's select this elements and click apply so you can see this is my earth pressure Close. So this completes till page number 25. I hope everyone have completed till this step. Let's start with page number 26. Here, uh, in creep and shrinkage properties, we'll go to properties, click on creep and shrinkage, click add. Let's type in C and S as a name, select European power grade is 35. MPA. 
notional size one this is the graph of creep coefficient click ok close similarly we'll add compressive strength select european standard age 43 thousand per meter square this includes the standard deviation click ok close okay let's go ahead now we'll click on meti meti change property here because we need to change the notional size so here let's select cbfip 1990 select all click apply close let's click on material link and link the time dependent material property which are in blue that means they are not assigned to the model this we need to assign to the base material let's select this two concrete materials and click add close let's go to page number 28 now and add the loads click on load sulfate select the sulfate load case and the load group set as minus one click add close so here you have sulfate that's been applied to entire model it will auto calculate based on the material and the section dimensions now let's add wet concrete load to the beam element so i have to select element beam loads select wet concrete load group also wet concrete dz direction minus 22 go to the groups and select the main girder elements Click apply. So this is wet concrete. Next, let's add the parapet load. Let's give it as parapet load. Let's give this as 20. Activate the main girders. Go to the top view and select the edge girders. And then click apply. So you can see this loads are applied. Wet concrete load and display. So do this step till page number 
okay let's go ahead now let's go to page number 29 so here we'll start the construction stage definitions i'll go to the load click on construction stage click add here i'll give the first stage as stage one duration as 15 the element tab let's add abutment and piles with the age of 28 days so this is the age of the concrete at the first day of this stage one and after that you have 15 days duration of the stage one so stage one goes on for 15 days on the first day of the stage one the age of this elements is 28 days the concrete maturity age this age is different from duration next is do a boundary add the supports go to the load and have here load let's add the sulfate and the earth pressure check apply so this is stage one let's add stage two same duration but here we'll add the main girders and the cross bracings. We are not giving the age here because they are made up of steel. And in the load tab, let's add the wet concrete load, which is the UDL acting on the main girders. Click apply. Let's go to stage three. Select transverse elements. Add. In the load tab deactivate the wet concrete load so here the composite action will kick in so the concrete load the wet concrete load would be deactivated click apply this is stage three let's add stage four and here in the load tab we'll add the parapet Click. Okay, so these are our main stages. Stage one, you have the substructure. Stage two, the main girders and the wet concrete load. Stage three, you have the wet concrete load deactivated and the composite action will kick in in stage three. And stage four, you have the parapet load. Now we'll add another stage, which is stage five. Here we'll only give the duration as 10,000 days. Just the duration to capture the creep and shrinkage effects. Click OK. 10,000 days. Or you can give uh, 365, 365 days into 100 years. So 36500 also you can give. Click close. So these are the main stages. You can graphically see them. You can see the stage one. These are my substructure and you have the boundaries. You can see the work tree has changed based on the stage selection. Whatever the things that are activated in this uh, in this stage one that would be displayed in work tree. You can see there is no other load wet concrete and parapet load, but the earth pressure is there and the sulfate is there. To see the stage two, you have the wet concrete load, which is coming into picture. This is my wet concrete load and stage three that wet concrete load is deactivated. So here you have to specify the construction state. That means the tops uh, concrete deck needs to be activated. But if you see in stage one stage one and st uh, in stage two the transparent portion is active. We did not uh, specify the program that girder is active in stage two and the slab needs to be activated in stage three that we need to specifically tell to the program through this command composite section for construction stage. So we have to do that next. We have stage four parapet load and stage five is duration stage. Click base, click on composite section for construction stage, click add. Let's select stage two. Here you have the mid span section material and stage stage two the age is zero 
part one and part two. So the entire steel composite section is divided into two parts. First part is your girder, steel girder. Second part is your concrete deck. So the girder and deck have different material properties. So one is steel, one is concrete, and they are active in different stages, main stages. So part one girder is active in stage two, whereas the deck would be activated in stage three. So in stage three, a whole composite section, part one plus part two would be acting. But in stage two, only part one would be acting. So that's the difference. As this is a concrete uh, deck, you have to give the age at the start of the stage three. And uh, then the notional size would be auto calculated. Click OK. So we need to do this for all the sections, steel composite sections. So we have mid and left to right and right to left. So we'll do that again. Let's change this to stage two. Let's select left to right. Material. In the deck material. This is 28. Click apply. Similarly, let's change this to uh, right to left. Give the same details. Okay, let's change this to stage three. Do test twenty-eight. And click. Okay. So this is my composite section for construction stage. Close. I'll give a minute of time. Follow from page number twenty-nine to thirty-four. So this finishes the construction stage definition. So Try to see if you have done all the steps correctly. Check the PDF and do it. And the people who have missed the, uh, some of the steps and uh, I, I, it would take a bit of time for them to correct, then you can open the step models. So open the step three model. And then you can start continuing from from this step because you have this tutorial so you can practice anyways so try to use those step models and after that uh, we can all do it together Okay. So. Yeah, I think some of them have not received the materials. Uh. Please send a reminder mail to this mail address Jessica at the red made She will send you the material. So that would be having the training uh, tutorial PDF and the step models. Just check if you can open this email or this link which I have shared. So here you have click here to download tutorial modifier.
Okay, so any questions here? So everyone, uh, if you have done till here, so there is can't add stage three. Yep. Yeah, uh, so have you created this main stages, ma'am? Okay. Okay, so you have created the main stages. And yes. uh, what about so here? I have created stage one to four, but for stage three, when I add the load, the wet concrete one to the deactivation, I can basically click apply because that's the sound. I don't know why. So have you activated the wet concrete load in stage two? Uh, no, I don't think I've done it. You have to activate that and then deactivate it in stage three. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, let me try. So, How do I activate in stage two? So it's just by adding it to activation. Yes. And the thing is that is activate. It is activated. Yeah. Perhaps I should delete stage four because I've created stage four in while. No, in stage four, what is activated? Oh, okay. Um, parapet. Okay, but so not the load. You can, not okay, load. Yeah. So in stage three, uh, wet concrete load, uh, if you uh, deactivate and click apply, is it working? Oh, wait. You can see a command message. Uh, there might be an error or a description yeah. that is given. What is it telling? Wait, it seems it's working now. <laughs> it's working? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how okay, it's so it, but <laughs> thank you. No, no problem. You should be able to create these five stages and then get into this composite section for construction stage. Then you have to add this three steps. Okay, stage four. Okay, so let's proceed to page number 35. So we'll define the moving load. So I'll select the Euro code.
here you have traffic line lanes click click on add let's add lane one here the lane width is three meters eccentricity is minus one point Click on cross beam, select the cross beams group. Turn off the hidden option. Now, in the two point method, we have to select the reference lane, line. So, this is my reference line. So, this is start and end node of the reference line. And from that reference line to the center line of the lane, that is minus A. So, that is minus 1.5. So, from this reference line, there would be a lane that lane that would be created and whose center line distance would be 1.5 from the reference line that's what this means now you can't see okay cancel apply option try to minimize and click okay so this is my lane one if you have uh, entered correctly or not you can right click and display it whether a lane is visible this dot to dot button indicates the wheel distance and this is the center line of the lane and the distance from the reference line is 1.5 meter similarly let's create lane 2 and lane 3 adjacent here to fill up the bridge let's add lane lane 2 let's give the eccentricity as minus 4.5 select the cross beams click here go to asymmetric view click on the first point the last point and then click okay similarly let's add lane 3 now this time let's give the eccentricity as minus 7.5 cross beams first node the last node minimize click OK and these are my three lanes first lane second lane and the third lane and display now we have to create the remaining area distance and uh, let's give it as R A remaining area the Lane width is one meter, which is remaining, and uh, the eccentricity is minus 10. The wheel spacing I'll give it as zero. Cross beam. Click on the same reference line. Click OK. So these are all my lanes. So this is lane one, lane two, lane three, and RA. I'll undisplay. Close. Click escape. So this completes page number 35 steps. Let's go to page number 36 and add the so there is a question. sorry that is not the email address uh, this is the email address where you have to mail so try to mail to this email address you will jessica will share the material kjo0602 other in midasite.com yeah let's go ahead now let's go to the vehicles add standard select LM1 click apply and also LM3 UK and X click OK close let's add the two vehicles now we'll give the instructions 
about uh, the vehicles that have to move on the line lanes click on moving load cases click add let's give the name as lm1 only and let's select all the lanes send the array here click apply And I'll undo this step just a moment. Uh, if you see here in the tutorial, it's given to ignore psi factor once. So I'll apply it. Okay, now I'll change LM1 only. So with psi factor and without psi factor, I'll click apply. So you have to add these two cases. So one is LM1 only. Ignore psi factor. Let's add. With the outside, select the links, send this to array, click OK. So these two cases, another case let's add, which is LM1 plus LM3. Select LM1 plus LM3 multi straddling. Lane 1 to lane, select these two and put them under straddling lanes. Click OK. Any questions here? This is still page number 39. So this completes the modeling. And the analysis data you can click close so let me summarize so we have materials time dependent material properties sections boundaries soil structure interaction static loads we applied then moving load data and then the construction stages till stage five now we'll click on analysis perform analysis Yeah, uh, here there is an error boundary condition has not been defined. I think while we are defining the point springs, we did not assign the group, selected the group. So I can change that from the tables. Right click on the point springs, go to tables, select the support, control C here, then control V. Same like what you do in Excel. Here in stage one, yeah, here you have the boundary conditions. So let's run the analysis again. All right, any questions still here? So we have completed most uh, of the steps of the tutorial. Next is the design steps. So if you have any questions, type in the questions. And if you have followed till here, uh, in, there is 
just a moment. We go back. I think okay, so all are not assigned to the support. Let's me go and do it from the start. Control C Control B. My cross check. So all the boundary conditions should be assigned to the particular group that we have activated in stage one. So all the attendees type in yes, if you have followed till here, if you have any questions, all the attendees type in yes. If you are able to follow type in yes. There's a question. Uh, static check perform will be done by Midas. Yes, static check means uh, you mean to say static load case. Yes. What program does is first it will run the construction stay analysis and uh, at the last stage, whatever the structural configuration and the boundaries that are there, it will carry forward to the static analysis and also to the moving load analysis. So next we have the design steps. If you see the material. So after that we'll see the results. And then we'll do the design of the steel composite section. A lot of theory is given. So these are all taken from the Euro code. And uh, you can all see the Excel table. And uh, we'll, uh, at the last, we'll generate the Excel report, design report.
Okay. So the analysis is performed. Let's go to the results. Click on load combinations. Go to steel design tab. Uh, you should make steel design uh, as the com the load combinations in the steel design tab, not in the composite steel girder design. So this was initially uh, coded in this steel design. So you have to make the load combinations here. I'll auto generate with respect to Europe code. Like okay. So these are simple four combinations that I've created. Strength. These two are for the strength. These two are serviceability. So you can manually create, or uh, if you have many static load cases like wind load, all those loads which are there, then the program will recognize the type and uh, provide the factor based on the euro code. So it will auto generate all the combinations. For simplicity, we have uh, I've only created four combinations. Now let's see the reactions. Go to the reactions. Click apply. So these are all the reactions at the pile location. You can display the value. You can turn on the legend. Go to the result tables. Click on reaction. So all the results are Excel compatible. So you can click any load case and you can check the reactions in tabular format. So you can switch to different stages and see the reactions, how they are changing based on the construction sequence. Next, you can see the deformations, how the deformations are changing in different stages. You can go to the forces, beam diagrams, click apply. Turn up the values. You can see the bending moment. So here you have stage one, stage two, stage three, till stage five. And uh, let's go to the post CS. Now you can go see the uh, in post CS. You have to see the results of the moving load. So I'll select one load case. So here we have defined three load cases. One is LM1. Uh, only and without psi factor and with psi factor and the other one is LM1 plus LM3. I'll select one and click apply. So you can see the maximum bending which is occurring here at 258 element. This is the element box. Click enter. So this is the element. So like that you can check the bending moment. You can see the shear forces. So let's see the bending moment and uh, let's see uh, this 258 element. What is the vehicle position that you can graphically see from this uh, this uh, good feature called moving load tracer? So you can go to move beam force at 258 element MY bending. What is the position of LM1 load? So you can see this is the LM1 load, which is occupied on the bridge deck, which is causing the maximum bending at this location. So program has this capability as well. This is very useful when you're cross-checking the, the moving load analysis uh, process, and uh, you can see well whether the loads are correctly applied on the deck or not. We can also convert this back to static load Click here, min max load to file. And here you have the data. You can select all, copy, and then go to tools and paste it here. And once you click run, I wouldn't be do, doing that because I need to rerun the analysis again. Once you click run from here, this is a text paid uh, input for the program, which is called MCT command shell. So once you click run, the program will create another static load case where the nodal loads uh, would be applied based on this like uh, positions and the loading. So this pattern, you, this load pattern, you can convert into static load case. That feature is also available. Click close. I think the results are all there. You can extract the bending moment, everything from the result tables. So let's go ahead for the design now. I'll unlock and lock the model again. So I'll go to the design. 
and this is for the steel composite design. Uh, PSC tab is for the PSC and PSC composite design. So for steel composite, you have to use this option, composite design. So I'll select the Euro code first. Set the design parameters. These are all there. As for the code, uh, let me change this to yeah. So these are all there, and then let's go to the design material. Here we have to add the concrete grade as C3545 and also the grade of the main rebar, click modify. Click close. Next, the longitudinal reinforcement. Let's give it for the mid span. So we are in page number 50. So if you see uh, the instructions are given, so you can enter the value as 0 0.07, number as 35, Spacing point one, P twelve, part two, click add. Similarly, I'll... so you can see this reinforcement. And click apply. So you need to create the reinforcement for the sections for the steel composite sections, like the left to right and right to left. To save time, I wouldn't be doing this. I'll be only uh, designing the mid span section. Click close. So let me go and uh, click on the shear connector. Let's give the shear connector data, uh, like two shear connectors, four to five, diameter 0 0.017, overall height 0.1, center to center distance 0.15, spacing as 0.2 and uh, select the main girders and click apply. Click close. So here you can also give the design position and the position for the design output. So design position, let me save some time and I'll only design some of the elements like fifth element. I can select that element and check apply. Similarly, I can select a design output position like the fifth element and only at ith end I want the output in my Excel report or I and J also I can select and click apply. Close. So you can set this design positions from this three dot button. Click this. So I can add it from the here as well in tables, the close. So this completes till page number 52. So design, we have made the load combinations. We set the parameters. We have given the grade. Next, the data, reinforcement data, design positions. I can select many girders, but this would take a bit of time. So that's why I've selected only one section, uh, one element for the design. And yeah, you have to specify where is the end post that you can do it from transfer stiffener at end support. Go to that option, select the nodes, first node and uh, ninth. This is first and second ninth, then 10. 18, 19, 27, 28, 36. And this has a rigid end post. Height is 0.08. Thickness is 0 0.025 meter. And spacing is 0 0.074. Close. So, you have specified that end post exists at this node locations. 
let's give damage equivalence factor. Let's give it one and one. Click on main grid is click apply close. Now we'll run the design. There are many variables, many parameters that you need to give. The program has a capability to check for fatigue, serviceability, load combination, light torsion pathway. Right now, for simplicity, I've given this data and let's perform the design. I can see the results from design result table pending resistance. See the demands and the capacities. R indicates the capacity, indicates the demand. Go to design results, click on vertical shear. Shear strength checks. So once the design is run, the program will check first classify the section based on the CNT ratio of the compression power, material yield strength, and the loading arrangement it classifies. So here the steel section is class one, and then it runs the bending resistance check. So main scope uh, assumption is assumption scope is that. The effective width of the concrete flange is not calculated by the program. You have to give it manually. But right now in the tutorial, you can give in the program, but we did not give it. So here you have the option for the effective width. And go to the structure tab. Here you have the effective width. So you can select the Euro code and select the main girders and then click OK. So that you can do it. But right now we did not use the effective width of the concrete flange sagging it will consider the concrete deck and the hogging it will ignore the slab and consider the reinforcement and the steel girder calculates the section properties calculates the bending resistance and compares with the capacity uh, compares with the demand demand versus the resistance and tells you whether it's okay or not okay Similarly, for the vertical shear, it uses all the code clauses. As for the Euro code, it runs all the checks. Shear buckling resistance, lateral torsion buckling, longitudinal shear, all these details. So you can see a detailed uh, calculations by generating an Excel report. Let's click on print result, click save as. Set the language, click OK. So this will print the design Excel report. So any questions here? This would take a bit of time to print the Excel report. So the report, so you can see the report. So for the fifth element, if you see the element number five, you can see the design parameters, the material information, steel composite section dimensions, the first, the bending resistance, the load combination, which is critical, the demands, and then it runs the capacity calculation and it checks whether the resistance is more than the demand and tells you whether it's okay or not okay. Runs the resistance for shear. Then lateral torsion buckling check, resistance to longitudinal shear, and then the serviceability restraint. All the calculations are given as per the Euro code. So the formulas are also neatly printed here. So that completes the training session. So any questions?
okay first uh, there is a question from marta like uh sorry i'm a bit behind uh, i can't find the rebar diameter as p12 yeah so that uh, is because you did not set the preferences so go to tools preference design load go to the composite and here you have to set the material code as zero so if you have set it to astm then it will specify hash symbol so general standard of america is uh, hash rebar so you have to change this to euro and then you can see p12 diameter bar okay any more comments very good presentation okay thank you and uh, any more questions Yeah, there is a question from Mr. Hitesh. Soil structure interaction will give similar results to GTS NX, right? Uh, not exactly, because uh, GTS NX is a 3D program where uh, you have created the soil around uh, the piles and you might have created the piles. And then you might have given the soil properties which are very exact. So that might give you a different result but that would be a very accurate way of doing the things but uh, here uh, we have auto generated the springs so that springs stiffness which we got that is very important so here you can go to online help and there is a theory called Hanum theory so you can go to boundary spring supports and click on integral bridge spring support so you can see the theory here so this is a formula based approach so this might not be very uh, uh, accurate as compared to gts nx but this would give you a reasonable result yeah any more questions please type in your questions So if you can practice this tutorial, yeah, you would be very comfortable in doing steel composite bridges, not only steel composite, any other bridge in Meta Civil. As I've shown all the options, majority of the options. There's another question from Mr. Guru. Please show static check performed by model. Is such option available in Meta? Yes, it is available. So if I uh, unlock this model, you have the static load cases. So I can go to load, static, add any static load. So if I do that, then it uh, then I have to rerun the analysis, which might take a bit of time. So, but you can do that. So you can create many static load cases like the wind load. Apply it as a UDL, and uh, and then you can check the results. So when you are checking the static load results, you have to be in POSIUS go to the results go to forces beam diagrams and here you can see your wind load or any other load that you have applied st indicates the static load okay any other questions type in the questions box uh, very good presentation thank you do you think you will do more in the future yeah i'm not sure about the future plan but uh, yeah there would be many upcoming sessions for uk but the timeline is not uh, fixed yet we'll let you know by email if you have any upcoming sessions yeah any more comments or suggestions yeah thanks a lot so we'll also share this recording through email to you so hope you have enjoyed this session uh, i think it is useful so if you have any questions, you can also post it in our global support dot So stay safe. Take care. All of you. Goodbye. Bye bye.